out of your friends, which are you? Truck freak crazy ass. The fire. Double is all about element advantage and randomness. Thanks to her character ability, she'll change from her current element to a new one by blocking for a second without getting hit. Keep in mind, you can't control which element you'll get, so you could potentially switch to element bonus or penalty. She's not capable of switching to neutral element though, but there isn't much utility for it anyway. In terms of moves, Double has a decent kit with very notable highlights. First is Bandwagon Rushdown, more commonly referred to as Hex Wagon, due to it being the only move to inflict Hex without the need of a signature ability. Megalithorade works as an excellent multi-hit meter removal tool, Beast of Gehina allows for extra time for transmutation if it hits, and last there's the combo of Celia Slide, Bogus Buzzard, and Hornet Bomber, known for being very easy to pull off and having high damage output. As for Marquis, both of them are great on their own right. Chaos allows Double to inflict random 15 second debuffs on criticals, and while at element bonus. It sounds like a lot of steps to make it work, and also makes crit rate investment recommended. But once the element bonus kicks in, you pretty much go to town with the opponent. Volatility allows her to gain random 10 second buffs every 10 seconds. This can add a dangerous randomness layer to the battle, for she could gain annoying buffs such as unflinching or invincibility, and it makes buff removal tools recommended. Nonsense has a quite insane ability, where at element bonus she gains 3 buffs if the enemy gains 1, and inflicts 3 debuffs if she gets inflicted with 1. Her disadvantages mostly rely on having to switch to the right element, needing the chaos marquee for offense, and depending on the opponents to make the most of her ability, like DDoS, Robo Fortune, or Heavy Metal Big Ben. But on the proper situations, she'll gain and inflict a lot. One of these cases would be Frost Armor, especially considering she starts off at air type, therefore having element bonus from the get go. Granted, you still need to watch out since she has poor base stats, but she's indeed capable of taking care of one of the most common meta nodes. Success! Sandy School seems like a decent variant at first, being able to reduce debuff timers on her team and extending the ones on the opponent for 3 seconds. However, she often becomes a redundant and unnecessary barrier. Sure, an 18 second hex is better than a 15 second one, but you would be better off running a healing support over Sunday, for example. There can be an amusement factor occasionally from the fact that she has the longest possible duration for chaos debuffs, but there's not much she can really offer. Temple Tyrant is a pretty niche variant for rifts, capable of instantly recovering health and convert debuffs to regeneration and armor. She has a similar problem to that of Nonsense, being very dependent on her stats and chaos, and she'll excel more at some nodes than others, Dark Weak nodes being a good example. But the extra step is that she'll have to transmute element, because of the lack of good fire type defenders. But if everything clicks, you'll have an easy and constant recovery, keeping a high health score by the end. Of course, better and less luck reliant variants exist, but she can definitely pull off good results from time to time. You tell me, you tell me, okay? Doubleicious is excellent. She's like a frail and lacking recovery, but stronger and more aggressive version of Salad Kill, where instead of removing buffs, she straight up steals them one at a time. She has comparatively less health, so you'll need to be more careful with her, and carrying supports for double or triple notes is advised. But at least she makes up for the lack of recovery by having access to Hex, either through Luck by Chaos or Hex Wagon. That's something Silent Kill doesn't have, carving an additional niche for Degum. Mist match can only be described as a mess. It requires you to switch to the same element the opponent has so you can copy their buffs, and after one expires you gain 3 precision stacks. It could sound great on concept, but it doesn't mix well with chaos at all, and there often isn't much need of copying opponent buffs, especially since stealing or removing them is a better option. You could try for a gimmicky set of running a taunt, or even just go for volatility to gain as many stacks as possible, and use mismatch as a pure precision user. However, a lot of variants get faster and more effective results. Just a convoluted mess. Back to the dumpster, child! 
I mentioned a lot Immortal Fiverr on past videos, and for good reason, she's one of the most omnipresent defenders in Rift battles as of now. Her ability is very basic, but also very effective, dealing 50% of her health in damage to the player when she dies, and also healing teammates that amount. That makes it so you want to kill her with precision hits or hex, otherwise you lose a lot of health, ergo a lot of points. Being paired with catalysts such as Blockbusted or Cursor Knowledge can help prevent Hex from Red Velvet or Precision from Dragon Brawl, although her primal counter will always be partial due to having Eric Call for Precision and Immunity so she can safely acquire it. Additionally, people will make attackers heavily invested in health for the purpose of tanking Immortal Fiber's damage form. Needless to say, that sounds like a lot of counters, but make no mistake, that's testament of how relevant in defenses is. Also, being a prize fight reward makes it very accessible and often can lead to investing on more than one. Boy, does that lead to investing more than one. Evergreenable also makes for a top tier defender, as she gains thorns and regeneration, cleanses debuffs, builds 5% meter per buff gain, and extends buff time for 5 seconds. That's a lot of features in one variant and has outstanding synergy with volatility. Not only you'll need to carry buff removal options to keep her in check, you also have to watch out for her easy meter gain per buff supply. She has one built-in weakness, where if she's at element penalty, she won't gain thorns and regen or cleanse debuffs. So going in with a fire type and call it a day can work for the most part, but you still need to watch out in case she turns mutes or gains a random annoying and flinching out of nowhere. Also, she can double down for support, as she can extend the time of a surge in general's buffs for example. Without a doubt, you want to get your hands on this Christmas tree. Nice. Rainbow Blight was the very first non-elemental variant in the game, although that really doesn't amount to much outside of slight flex, especially considering her ability revolves around transmuting a lot. The buffs and debuffs depend on the element she gains, most useful being light, as she gains immunity and inflicts hex. However, nowadays she is rather unreliable due to most of the buffs and debuffs not being overly essential, and the ones that are will depend on the element you want. Also, if you want to both capitalize on the element change buffs and debuffs and chaos, you'll waste a lot of time switching elements. So unfortunately, she has an age very well. Yellow with black stripes, man! Xenomorph has suffered over the years as well, but for different reasons. With access to permanent doom and an environment full of futile resistance bosses and where piercing didn't exist, she was the prime choice of easily beating this with little struggle. It would take a lot of time due to the need of repeatedly switching back and forth and the 30 second length of doom, but she'd get it done safely. Now, not only is she incredibly sluggish due to the metagame becoming faster, but the stat change screwed her over with the inclusion of resistance, making it so that defenders could potentially not get inflicted with doom, wasting even more time. Some have considered defensive use for her because of her permanent bleeds on death, which when paired with Assassin's Creed, it can catch people off guard, but it ends up being an obvious strategy, since too many easy to pull off counters exist, killing Assassin's Creed first for example. Obviously it sounds like she's straight up garbage due to the amount of negatives stated, but she's okay at best, I mean if pull off, it's a free kill, however compared to other options, she's definitely outdated. I can't believe you've done this. Heart of Darkness has one of the coolest ideas for an ability, in the form of copying the opponent's ability. It's too bad that it's situational, since copying a defender like Dreadlocks won't do much for you, but at least makes up for it thanks to the rest of the ability, including a 30 second hex and transferring debuffs from enemy to enemy when they tag in. The former especially due to its outstanding duration. It has a major downside, where it's linked to the ability copy and it can only be used once per match. The hex can also be resisted, so investing in accuracy comes heavily advised. She doesn't quite take Red Velvet's place as a hex due to being one use only and luck dependent, but makes up to an extent by having superior offense capabilities. Creature of Habit is best suited as a hard hitter, due to her miasma gain being incredibly lackluster. It mostly works as a quick extra meter gain and extra chip damage, but once you have a full blockbuster, you'll stop gaining miasma altogether and start receiving enrages instead. This way she becomes capable of taking down several foes at a fast pace, due to constantly being at 5 stacks, but your use of blockbusters needs to be limited because using one will remove the enrages. At the end of the day, she ends up being a pretty good sweeper, but won't go much further than that. 
Jawbreaker is also a notable sweeper, revolving around bonus damage per buff equipped. This makes it so you want to carry buff supports such as Surgeon General and Persona Assist, not only for the support purpose itself, but to increase Jaw's power as much and for as long as possible. The random buffs on transmutation is nice, but generally won't do a whole lot aside from the brief bonus damage. And much like Creature of Habit, she doesn't amount to much more other than a sweeper, but also a competent one at it. With cheese, Mr. Squidward! Republican ah! I did not have pugilistic relations with that woman. 